Greetings, fellow mathematicians. In this video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to how we use power series to solve second order ODEs with non-constant coefficients. Before you get started with this video, you might want to go back and review basic topics related to power series, like what you might have learned from your Calc 2 course. So to get started, the ODE that we'll be working with, the general form, will involve non-constant coefficients, but they're going to be really simple, typically powers of x, maybe multiplied by a number, a coefficient. Now, be careful. If the power of x matches the order of the derivative, we get a Cauchy-Euler equation, which we already know how to solve. So we won't be dealing with those. Typically, the powers of x here, they're going to be all mixed up and not match the order of the derivative. And they become a lot harder to solve. Now, in that case, what we do is we assume that this ODE has a function that we can represent its solution as a power series. Now, we're not going to touch on what sort of functions we can represent as power series and issues of convergence. We're just going to look at, in this video, how we take a power series and use it to solve a differential equation. All right, now when we assume y has a power series representation, what we're actually looking for and trying to determine is the values for the coefficients, which we'll denote as c sub n. Now, since this is an infinite series, you have an infinite amount of them, c sub 0, c sub 1, c sub 2, so on and so on. So our primary goal, whenever we work with a power series, is we're going to try to determine the values for the coefficients. Ideally, we want to be able to determine all of them, but in your science and engineering courses, you might only determine the first few values, the first few coefficients, depending on the accuracy for your solution that you need for your problem that you're working on. Now, how we actually determine those values, that's where the work lies. In this first part, we'll be getting to how, with y as a power series, we get a power series representation for y prime and y double prime. And once we have all three of those power series, we're going to plug them into the ODE and try to find a formula for the coefficients. That formula is usually what's called the recurrence relation. And it's a formula that you can determine as many values for the coefficients as you want. So the second part of this video, we'll be getting to the details that kind of flesh out how we go through this outline. But what we're going to be trying to do is combine all three of those power series for y, y prime, and y double prime into a single power series. And that's usually going to give us the recurrence relation. All right, so for this part, right in the beginning, let's get to how, starting with y as a power series, we find power series representations for y prime and y double prime. Now, the reason in mathematics that you want to work with power series, powers of x are really simple to differentiate. We just need to use the power rule. So let's go ahead and apply that. We're going to ignore any issues with convergence. That's not our focus for this video. We're just going to go through how we use these to solve differential equations. So let's go ahead and differentiate by using the power rule. So we have an infinite series. I'm going to hold off on writing the starting value for n. We're going to get to that in a moment. But if we apply the power rule, we bring the power n down and subtract 1. And let's also differentiate term by term here so we can see what our starting index should be. 
It could be zero, but there's something that I prefer to point out to avoid any issues with um, improper indices. Notice for your power series here, starting with n equals zero, there are no negative indices. We just have zero and then positive integer indices. All right, so let's go ahead and differentiate term by term. C sub zero is a constant that differentiates to zero. C1 times x, we know x differentiates to one. So the first term we'll be left with is C1. And then if we apply the power rule for all these higher powers, bring a power down and subtract one, looks like we should get two. C2x to the one, bring your three down, three C3 x squared, and then the last term that we have written, but realize there's an infinite amount of them buried in the dot, dot, dot that keep going, we get four, c4, x cubed. All right, now if you take a look at the terms you have here, notice what's your first index you see? One. And notice your first term here contains no x. In other words, there's an x to the zero power. So if you take a look at your term here in the summation, x to the n minus one, well, in order to get that to be x to the zero, we would need to start the value of n with one. Now, I like this version for the term in the derivative power series because we're just applying the power rule from here to there. Now, as nice as that is, we have to accept that we're going to change our starting index to one. In the second part of this video, we're gonna go through a technique called shifting indices that allow you to change your starting index to basically whatever starting value for the index you would want, but that's in the second part. All right, we have our power series for y prime. We also need our power series for y double prime. So let's take this power series and we'll differentiate it again with the power rule. And again, I'm gonna hold off on writing what the starting index is but it's still a sum from some index up to infinity. Now when I apply the power rule, I bring this power n minus one down. Be careful, there already is a factor of n. And if we apply the power rule consistently, we subtract one again, giving us x to the n minus two. All right, let's go ahead and differentiate term by term that might be the easiest way to see what our starting index should be. So differentiate C1, that's a constant, that differentiates to zero. And as we go term by term, the derivative of X is one, but we're left with the constants 2C2. And then go on from there, apply the power rule, power rule we'll bring the two down, so three, times two C three X. Apply the power rule again, bring the three down. Four times three C four X squared and so on and so on. Now, if you take a look at the first index you see in the coefficient, you see an index of two. That's one reason why we're gonna start this power series for the second derivative with n equals two. Now the other reason we're gonna start it with n equals two is notice this formula for the term in the summation contains x to the n minus two. Our first term or first non-zero term that we're left with in the power series contains no power of x or really x to the zero so in order to get x to the n minus two to give x to the zero, we'd have to start n with two. All 
All right, that is the first part that you want to get down and completely understand. For every single ODE with non-constant coefficients that you're gonna solve with a power series, you're gonna be using basically these three power series or an equivalent version. These are the versions I like to use in my differential equations course. Your professor might use shifted versions of these where the indices and powers of x might be shifted. And again, we'll be getting to that technique of shifting the indices in the second part of this video. All right, so for right now, we've achieved our goal. We assumed a power series for y, and we came up with power series representations for y prime and y double prime. All right, let's go ahead and get to the tips and tricks of how we're gonna take all three of these different power series, plug them in, and how we combine them into a single power series to give us the formula for the coefficients called the recurrence relation. Now that we can find power series representations for y prime and y double prime, we're ready to get to the tips and tricks that we're going to be using to solve differential equations with these. Now, in some differential equations courses, the professor might not mention these tips or tricks at all, and if they do, they might go through them really fast. We're gonna take our time, so that way you can understand how to use them, so that way you can do well in your differential equations course. All right, our first tip or trick is actually quite simple. It goes back to your Calculus two course when you first learned about power series and infinite series. All right, so the, the first tip or trick is how we combine multiple power series together. And if we have the same starting index in each power series, we can basically combine those two power series into a single one. Now, we're able to go one step further. A power series has a term, a power of x, times a coefficient. Well, if we have not only the same starting index, but the same power of x, x to the n, we can go ahead and add the coefficients together and basically factor that power of x out, x to the n, in our single combined power series here. All right, we'll be using that one along with some others. The next is, well, what do we do if these starting indices are different? Here we use a very simple trick that I call writing out terms. So an example we have here, we have a power series starting with n equals zero, but this one starting with n equals two. Now there's a number of ways you can do this, but notice here in your summation from zero to infinity, you do have after two terms, your index starting with two. So to get this index to match that one, we're gonna write out two terms from this power series, and then we'll have an index starting with two. We're gonna write out the n equals zero term here and the n equals one term. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna plug first in n as zero, and we get c1, x to the zero, All right, now we go to the n equals one term. So plug in n everywhere as one, we get c sub two times now x to the first power, x to the one. And then what comes after n equals one? n equals two and beyond. So now after the first two terms that we wrote out, we have our index now starting with two and going to infinity and the term remains the same, c sub n plus one times x to the n and we're just gonna carry this power series down. 
starting index is two, and your term is n times n minus one, c sub n, times x to the n. And notice, while we have these two terms out front, these two power series, now we can combine them together. So just keep track of these terms. We have it as C1 plus C2x. And now we're able, using the previous idea, to combine these two power series together. And in addition, because we have the same power of x, x to the n, when we combine them, we can really add those coefficients. So we get a single power series here, starting with index n equals two and going to infinity. We're gonna add the coefficients, c sub n plus one plus n times n minus one times c sub n and we factor the x to the n out. All right, that's how we use this tip or trick called writing out terms. Write out as many terms as you need, so that way eventually those indices match for the starting index in your summations. Typically, for solving differential equations, you might have to here write out two terms, maybe one term, maybe sometimes three terms, but usually not too many. All right, this technique or trick, that's when the indices here don't match, but the powers of x do. There's the other possibility that the powers of x don't match, so which would prevent us here from being able to combine these coefficients together and get a single power of x. So what do we do when the powers of x here don't match? Well, we can use another tip or trick called shifting indices. And this will be what we use to change the term here, maybe from containing a uh, power like x to the n, maybe we wanna change it and shift it to be x to the n minus one or vice versa. So that way we have the powers of x match as well as eventually the starting indices in our summation match as well. All right, so let's take a look at a simple example. This is our power series representation for y double prime. Now, these are, again, the versions I like to use in my differential equations course. Your professor might be using equivalent versions where maybe they have it where there's not an x to the n minus two, but rather x to the n. The labeling here with how you count your indices is arbitrary as long as you are consistent with it. So let's suppose we wanted to take this power series representation where the power of x is x to the n minus two, and maybe we wanna shift it and rewrite it so that way it contains x to the n. Now, I like to do this by shifting or replacing all ends here with a shifted version. So let's take a look at this power of x. That's usually what we're most interested in with differential equations, getting the powers of x to match for the previous tip or trick here. And how we can do that is we're gonna replace all ends with in a, a different expression, so that way we're left with x to the n. Now, if you just take a look at that power, if I replace n with n plus two up here, n plus two minus two does give you x to the n. So we're going to shift all our indices by two values. We're gonna replace all n's in this power series with n plus two. Now, be careful. This is very, very subtle. So I wanna take our time and point it out. Try to notice where all the ends are 
in this power series representation. Students usually pick it out in the power of x. They can see the factors that we have here from applying the power rule. There's the index of the coefficient, but there's an n in another spot. The lower part of your summation. Now, I want to focus on this part here, this n right there, that is going to be replaced with n plus 2 as well. Now, this might look a little bit weird, but if you replace this n right there on the left side of that equation, really it's just telling you what your value of n is starting with, but if you do that, you get n plus 2 equals 2. And notice what happens when you perform this shift, shifting x to the n minus 2 to x to the n, which we achieve by replacing n with n plus 2. Notice this has the effect of changing your starting index. And that's a very simple equation. Again, we just made this replacement right here. And that equation, if you solve it, that gives you that your summation now starts with index n equals zero. That's the tricky or subtle part. Make sure you understand that. If you ever need to shift indices, and that's again a technique here to get your powers of x to match, make sure you realize you might be shifting your starting index value as well. All right, now once you see that, shifting the rest of the terms is very simple. We have an infinite series. Our starting index has now shifted to n equals zero. We still sum to infinity. This n right here, that gets replaced with n plus two. So we get a factor n plus two. This n in here gets replaced with n plus two. Typical, like I would in my differential equations course, just do some of that basic math as you go. n plus 2 minus 1, that would give you n plus 1. All right, don't forget about your index, the subscript of the coefficient. That n gets replaced with n plus 2. So c sub n plus 2. And the most important part of why you would shift your indices to shift your power of x, that now shifts n plus 2 minus 2, you get now x to the n. All right, and that completes our third tip or trick. The trickiest of all, again, very subtle here, changing your starting index with your replacement. And that's going to be how you shift your indices. Now, if you take a look at all the work here, combining multiple power series together, writing out terms and shifting the indices, none of this is really complicated. If you take a look at that, that's all pretty minimal. It's actually quite simple, just adding and subtracting. But don't be deceived. These problems can be very tedious to solve, especially if you go too fast, very easy to lose track and miswrite uh, uh, an index, miswrite a subscript. My one recommendation would be not only to take your time, but take double extra time. So that way you don't misrepresent any indices or coefficients or powers of x. It really pays off to take your time with these. All right, that completes the standard tips and tricks of how you're going to use these three power series for y, y prime, and y double prime to solve differential equations with power series. We're going to have some problems that follow in the next bit of videos, but this is our overview of how you get started. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, support the channel, like, and subscribe.